Hi everyone, so today we're going to go over creating groups in Canvas. This is a very useful tool um, and it's one that I use quite often. Uh, the purpose of this video is so that by the end of it you'll feel confident creating groups in Canvas and using that in your class. So um, there's some traditional methods to making groups. You may think of standing in the front of the classroom and giving every student a number and then finding the number around the room. Um, and, you know, that works out well for the most part, but all of a sudden you have a student not pay attention to their number or two students who are friends that want to be in the same group and kind of ignore the number system and you forgot whether or not you actually gave them the same number or not. And then the groups are all different sizes. One way to make sure that groups are perfectly even um, and have an efficient, easy way is to make groups ahead of time using Canvas. So I'm going to click on my world history page and I'm going to show you how to make groups. All right, so if you click on the people tab on the left hand side, okay, you can create a group. You can create groups. You can do this by in the top right hand corner clicking add group set. All right, so let's make a name for this group set. Sample project one. Okay, then um, all you have to do is then decide how many groups do you want. So this is going to do it for all of your sections. So you have to be cognizant of that. So let's say you want six groups per section. I have two sections in world history, so I want there to be 12 groups. Okay, then another thing you want to do is you want to require group members to be in the same section uh, just because, you know, this way um, they're in the same class together. If you have someone in first period and sixth period in the same group, it might ruin the group dynamic. Now, look, if this is a group assignment that's completely virtual um, and it doesn't matter if they're in the same section, that's fine. I found that most of the times at St. John's, uh, I do need them to be in the same section, so I check that box. You can create groups manually if you wanted to make, uh, you know, mixed ability grouping or something like that. Um, that's fine. Um, that that would be something that you would check this box, and then you'll have the ability to drag and drop students as much as you want. Um, leadership. This can be a really good uh, feature if you want to have there be roles for students so if you want there to be a, you know a student you know manager or something like that in each group you can automatically assign that and you have it be the first group or set a random student I normally don't do that uh, but if it is something that you would like to do you have that ability and then all you have to do is hit save and a group set will be made now I'm not going to do this because as we saw I made the mistake already when I made an assignment um, of actually creating a live group set or, or publishing an assignment and then I had to go make an announcement to fix that. So I'm going to hit cancel. But if you hit save I'll show you what it will look like with a different group. Alright so I'm going to hit cancel. You're going to hit save. Alright so if I was to look at chapter 17.1 round robin okay here are or let's look at a different one here here's a here's a perfect example so we have the groups will pop up if you just hit this down arrow all of them will be displayed okay these are all groups in sixth period okay and then these are all groups in first period now one thing I did need to do Okay, is it will just put them out as groups one through ten because there's ten groups, so it's a group one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then this was six, this was seven, this was eight, this was nine, this one was ten. I wanted to edit the groups because I wanted students to see the group number. Okay, I didn't want them to get confused when they were group six um, because they were just group six because of. Um, they were combined with both sections. So all you have to do to rename a group is if you click these three dots right here, okay, you hit edit, and then you can change um, the name of the group. Okay, so I just did it as round robin first period group one. 
Okay. Uh, and the whole purpose of this was just so they knew that they were group one, not group six. Um, and what I always do is they do get a notification on their Canvas page that says, hey, you're part of this group, here are your partners. But I like to just display this screen to the class. So if I was to zoom out just to get everybody in there, okay, I would display this on the projector and I tell the students come up and see if, um, and see who your team members are uh, just so that this way they can easily move around the room and find everybody else. So that's how you make groups in Canvas. It's a very useful tool for group projects or even just for interactive lessons. This was a round robin lesson where they all had a textbook reading and they needed to make little summaries and share them with the whole class. Um, and it took about, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. So this is a really efficient way. Rather than counting people off, you could just put this up on the screen and in you know 40 seconds or so, you have students in groups ready to go. Um, and it's one quick way to get this done um, and to randomize it. Um, and one other good thing about it is, let's say you make groups and you realize that two of your students don't work well together. Um, you can move students around and, and, and switch groups around too. It's, it's not really a big deal. It's pretty easy. Um, and that's all you have to do is just drag and drop your students. Okay. So anyways, that's the ins and outs of making groups in Canvas. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're able to use this in your class. Thanks for listening.